Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Alex, if you are new. So today, um, I want, I don't know if you guys have seen this bold glamour filter. Okay, first things first, Auric lip balm. <laughs> It'll be linked down below, everything will be linked down below. This is the bold glamour filter on TikTok. It is insane what it does to your face. I mean, filters are crazy, you know. This one legit puts like makeup on you and everything. It's ridiculous. And I've been seeing a lot of makeup tutorials, a lot of requests for makeup tutorials. <sighs> anyway, I thought I would do it because I know you guys want to see it, but it does make me depressed. Um, I'm going to start off with some Fix Plus by MAC just to rehydrate. And I'm using this primer from Sicily, which is extremely expensive. I don't have a drugstore dupe. I don't think a drugstore dupe exists for this primer, to be completely honest with you. It has a very fine pearl in it. Uh, a makeup artist once told me that it's the best thing, but you don't want to overuse it. It can like kind of destroy your skin <laughs> if you use it too much. But I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for it. Then I'm going to go in with the Vanish Primer from Hourglass, which is like a pore filling primer essentially in the center of my face, especially in areas where I have larger pores or just like more noticeable pores. And obviously, you know, I have some breakouts happening right now. So mostly in the center of my face, just in areas where I want like very, very, very smooth, very smooth. Uh, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the MAC Studio Radiance Primer, which is very, very hydrating underneath my eyes because when you are covering up dark circles, hydration is so important. So I, you know, I went in with that glowy foundation. So I went in with that glowy primer, but I need that moisture as well. So I'm using the Ola, 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 is that how you say it? Ola, Ola Henriksen, I think is how you pronounce it. The new Banana Bright Eye Stick, which a lot of people were curious about. So I was at Sephora the other day and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna pick it up. It does actually work quite nicely. Uh, I believe it has a vitamin C, um, I don't know, whatever. It's got, like they have three different shades. So you can find one for your skin tone. This one is obviously very yellow. Um, and it worked pretty well, I think, pretty well for color corrector. I'm using the Redness Correct from Makeup Forever for the larger areas of my face that are just a little bit red and irritated right now. Uh, it's a really nice primer. It's very, very lightweight, and you can mix it in with your foundation if you need to make it a little more green. Uh, somebody said that I should try Fawn by Anastasia Beverly Hills to contour rather than Fenty in Amber. So I recently picked it up. Uh, and I thought I would use it for this tutorial. Now you'll notice that I'm putting my contour down first for this. This is basically like a foundation stick. It's much thicker in formula than my amber um, Fenty match stick. So I'm laying out my contour to begin with. Um, I'm gonna lay basically each product out individually and then blend in. So I obviously am looking at an image of myself that I took uh, with the Bold Glamour filter, which is what I'm using as a guide for my contour. So you'll notice that like, it's kind of similar, but there are things that I'm doing differently, mostly the nose. Uh, I'm gonna be using this very light concealer from Makeup Forever to lay in the high points. Again, I'm using this image as a guide. Now I'm gonna be mixing the Lisa Eldridge foundation with Armani Luminous Silk. Uh, again, the shades will be linked down below. I just like this combo for some reason, the color works nice. And I'm just kind of like filling in the gaps. So I'm just gonna be popping it, popping it in all the areas where I don't have highlight or contour. Um, <laughs> I kind of loved it, but it is really silly. And I'm starting off with the concealer. So I'm using the top of the LC Cosmetic Vel Velvet Sponge. I know a lot of people always ask about it. It's not always easy to find. Uh, Kosas has a pointier, like a pointy sponge that is very nice as well um, that you can get at Sephora. So I'll link them both, but I'm going in and blending out all of the lights first. So the super highlights I'm beginning with, and then I'm gonna start moving into the foundation with this sponge. Uh, it's This is nice just for precision. I like using it underneath my eyes because it does have that point, but in general, just like, you know, big bulky sponges are going to be a little bit harder to blend. I'm using my Fenty sponge to blend out the contour now. Uh, so I guess, okay, I lied. So I'm starting off with the highlights, then the contours, then finishing off with the mid-tone, which would be my foundation, just to make sure that everything is blended. So I was honestly, like my arm really hurt after blending this much. Like at some point, I think I left it in. I, I was like, oh my God, it's just taking forever. Uh, so I don't know if like, uh, I don't know why I chose to use a sponge. 
maybe a brush would work better, I don't know. But um, when you lay it all out like this, it's a lot of blending. Like it is a lot of blending, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Um, and actually the color, I would have thought that the color is too warm for my skin tone, but I do think that Fawn actually works very nicely as a like contour bronzer substitute. You can see I've turned my sponge. I don't know if you can really tell. Now I'm going into the foundation and blending those certain areas before I do detail areas like my nose. Uh, I don't know if that was like super obvious, but you can see how those colors just kind of like meld together. <laughs> yeah, here I was like, Jesus, <laughs> so much blending. <laughs> um, it worked out really, really beautifully, like added really nice shape to the face. But back to that tinier sponge for underneath my eyes, just because the inside of my eyes are a little bit more deep set. They can be hard to navigate. You could, use a, you could use a brush also, but um, the sponge is really nice, especially for like around the nose. Uh, this is obviously a very different nose contour than what I'm used to, but I think I am going to adopt it. We'll see. So yeah, I don't know, whatever. You see what I'm doing, I'm blending, Jeez. So I started off with a sponge with the nose to begin with for like a general thing, cause I was just following the image um, and I wanted everything to be really, really soft. But then I went in with this brush from BK Beauty and did a little bit more detailing. In fact, I go in, back into the nose a lot because keep in mind, the Bold Glamour filter straight up uses, like it makes your face more narrow. Uh, it makes your nose more narrow. Like that's, you can do only do so much with contouring. You know what I mean? So I am building up a little bit more definition around my cheeks, but you'll notice that I put that contour all around my face. So it is creating a little bit more of an oval effect to my face. And then I'm just going in right now with a sponge, a little bit more product to build up in certain areas, create a little bit more sculpt. And back to the nose, this is probably one of the hardest parts. Cause like I said, they basically just make your nose look so much smaller than it is. So it looks like not contoured in the filter, it just looks smaller. So like, what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm going in with a little bit of Tarte Creamy Shape Tape in Light Stand, just to build up a little bit more coverage just in this area right here um, below my eye. So not my, not exactly my under eye, kind of like focusing it a little bit more on the cheek area. And then I'm gonna be using this blush from Sigma, beautiful, uh, using my secret sponge, always. And I'm gonna be popping that on my cheekbones Mm, I don't, did I take this underneath my eyes? Not really. I kind of focused it like directly on the top of my cheekbones. The filter doesn't really add too much blush. I think it depends on like the lighting that you're in. Uh, but I wanted to add a little bit of something, like a little bit of a glow. It did look like there was a little bit of like some kind of a peachy, peachy look in the filter. So I'm just popping that in and making sure that it's like blended nicely into that contour. This is the medium pencil by Refi. Uh, the brows are very, very dark. They made my brows really dark, but what I appreciated actually about the filter is that it followed my exact brow shape. So it really just kind of like darkened up and filled out um, and kind of thickened a little bit, thickened in terms of like the actual hair that I have. Uh, so it just made them appear like, like the hair is thicker overall, not my actual brows are thicker. So I pretty much just followed my natural shape the way that they are filling in like a few gaps. Uh, not really thinking like, okay, I'm gonna brush these hairs way up and then go in, you know, and fill. So it, it actually ended up being like a little bit more of a natural shape, kind of following my like natural brow shape, which was interesting because I'm not used to doing that. Uh, so yeah, once again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I did a little bit of highlighting with that concealer underneath my brow bone, once again, following the uh, photo that I showed you. Just wanting to make sure that everything is nice and blended. And then obviously spot concealing. I have some breakouts happening, you know, so uh, I had like a little combination of concealers that I put out on a paper towel, which included the first concealer that I used, my contour color, and then the Tarte Shape Tape. And I would mix them based on like what area of my face I was using. I'm going in with this paint, eye paint from Give Beauty, Gwen Stefani's brand. This is my first time trying it. And I just thought it was so perfect. It just looked exactly like the color and the finish from the photo of the filter. So I placed this pretty much like all over the lid, but focusing on the outer corner and then bringing it up to that inner part of the brow and then blending a little bit. So kind of like no eye primer, just using my natural eyelids 
and kind of like working with that color that's already up there, just kind of enhancing it a little bit. It had a really, really light shimmer, which gave it a really nice luminosity. Uh, I ended up taking it along my lower lash line. I think I built it up like a little bit more than this. Basically, it looks as natural as possible. Uh, it's like makeup that looks as natural as possible, essentially. So you're basically just kind of like using your, whatever your eye color is, like if you have dark circles, whatever it is, just kind of like you, you working with it, you know? Which was very nice. Now I'm going in with this brown eyeliner, also from Give, very creamy and nice. I'm gonna be patting this. It's always easier for me to pat just along my lash line, just kind of like poke at my lashes so I can keep it as tight as possible. And then I'm using this flat definer brush from Sigma to kind of blend it out. Uh, so I just wanted to add like a little bit of definition to the lashes without making it like too intense. I didn't want it to be hard. I wanted it to be nice and smoky, but also keeping it very, very tight to the lashes. Uh, the filter definitely just kind of like adds a little something, like a little smoke, no winged liner or anything like that. And then I'm lining my upper water line or tight line. I don't know. People call it tight line. I just call it upper water line <laughs> uh, just to kind of like bring that all home. You want to make sure there's no gaps between your liners. I took a teeny bit of that on the outer corner of my bottom lash line and then just used that same brush, kind of patted it out. I didn't want it to be super dark, but it definitely looked like there was a little bit of definition down there. You can see I'm like wiping some of it away. Uh, just trying to keep it as natural looking as possible. Uh, so like a little bit worn, I don't know. Just put that eyeliner on and then rub it, you know? I decided to extend on the outer part a little bit because there isn't a wing but the filter makes your eyes look more lifted. So I wanted to kind of like try to emulate that as much as possible. Now, this is a La Mer powder foundation. It's very expensive. It gives such a beautiful quality to the skin though, which is why I wanted to use it. So rather than just going in and setting my face with a loose setting powder, which you can totally do, I'm going in with this over top and focusing in the center of my face, but then kind of blending into everything which just, I mean, it's gonna solidify. It just creates that like airbrush look. For underneath my eyes though, I'm using my e.l.f. Halo Glow Powder like I typically do, same situation. Another thing with the uh, filter is that it did not completely conceal my dark circles. It did make them look much less obvious as if I didn't have as much of a hollow underneath my eyes, but the color was kind of there. Uh, so I went in and set that powder with the D-Slick from Urban Decay. Gotta hit it, gotta hit it with that fan, dude. You gotta, you gotta dry this stuff quick, okay? I don't have time. So now I'm going in with a powder found, I mean a powder contour. Wayne Goss, you already know, Wayne Goss Radiance Boosting Face Palette, and I'm building up that contour a little bit more now that I have set with that powder foundation. You know me, I love to layer, I love to make things harder for myself. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Love to layer creams and powders, okay? It's just like, if I'm doing full glam, if I'm going glam, now this is the bold glamour filter, then I'm gonna do this, okay? So going in and reinforcing all of those areas, uh, I'm a big fan of contrast and this filter is all about that. It's all about like def really defining those areas of your face. Like I said, went back into the nose again. So I'm going in with that powder foundation. I'm using not the typical uh, blending, tinier blending brush that I usually use. I'm actually using a fl fluffier eyeshadow brush to build up that contour. You can see I'm focusing mostly on the tip. Uh, I mixed these two shades from the Sigma palette, really beautiful, just for the center and patted, out, patted it out a little bit. I didn't want it to look too finished. Obviously, Pears Soap, you know, it's my fave. Uh, going in and coating all of the hairs, all the hairs. And I'm going to, rather than like brush them up straight and make them look super fluffy, I'm kind of just like laying them the way that they grow. Obviously I am using the photo <laughs> as a reference. So the areas where like the, the hairs are laying in that image, you can see I'm looking back quite a bit. I'm really trying to focus. I'm tr I mean, I'm trying to follow this as perfectly as possible. Hitting my lashes with the Refer Lash Curler, few pumps going up the root. That's the way that I do it. And what I kind of liked about this, uh, this is another Give Beauty product. It's the new mascara. What I liked about this filter is that it did not curl the lashes like crazy. Uh, the focus was not on lashes. It doesn't add lashes. So I just kind of like focused at the base. You can see I'm kind of like 
spinning it really, 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 really close to my base. And then just a teeny little bit on that outer corner of the lower lash line, just to give a little, like finish that definition. I'm going in with the Melt Perfectionist brow pen. You guys have already seen this, it's fantastic. Um, it's kind of like a universal brown, I guess. And filling in any gaps, the, like I said, the brows were very, very dark, which I actually love with my light hair. So going in and filling all of those gaps, once I went in with my soap, it usually ends up showing like, you know, those sparser areas that I just missed with the pencil once, you know, once you've had everything brushed out. I picked up a little bit more shadow from my Hindash palette just to add a teeny bit more definition on that outer corner again, because the filter really lifts the eyes. So I just wanted to go in with like a little bit extra. You don't really need to, you can keep it as simple as possible, but I was trying to be as true as possible. Uh, I'm using the Rare Beauty Enlightened Highlight. And this filter really does make my face a little bit more oval. So I'm obviously following it as a guide to hit all of the areas that are looking, looking beaming, but it's pretty much the center of the face. So obviously that's what I'm doing. Um, and, and this highlighter is so perfect for this. I mean, it emulates the effect beautifully, but I am only focusing that in the center. Then I'm going in with this one, the name I can't remember, <laughs> but it'll be linked. Hitting the tops of the cheekbones and I'm gonna place this in the uh, very inner corner of my eyes. So the very, very light highlight right in the center of the face and then using this more peach one on the other areas. This is the lip liner from uh, Dose of Colors. Uh, Orpha's collaboration with them. I think this is the 2000s lip liner. I'm pretty sure it'll be linked to, like the lip set will be linked down below. Such a nice color, loved it so much. Anyway. They make the lips, like this filter makes the lips, they, the filter makes the lips so big. So I'm really overlining that upper lip to match it with my lower lip and doing a little bit of contouring. Then I went in with Orpha's lip gloss from that same, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's the 2000s lip kit and uh, just kind of like blended into the lip liner. And it was a beautiful combination. I absolutely loved this so much. Beautiful formula and everything. You can see I like kind of, turn it and use the applicator. I'm using much lighter hand just to blend into that lip liner without losing that definition completely. This is one of the best ways to do it. I decided to go in with the Summer Fridays. Uh, is this just called the gloss? Lip oil? I don't know, whatever. Everybody's got glosses and lip oils to add a little bit more pink and just blend it out a little bit, which I thought matched the filter much better. Uh, <laughs> so that's it, you guys. This is the finished look. Uh, personally, I think I nailed it. What do you think? I mean, there's only so much you can do with makeup versus like, you know, Facetune, but I think that I really fucking nailed it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. It definitely like doing this made me think about my makeup very differently, uh, especially my nose contour. I kind of liked that. Like you could see the, like, it wasn't trying to straighten my nose completely, you know, which is something that I usually do. So I don't know. I hate this filter but also it was kind of fun. <laughs> um, oh my God. And then when I finally did my makeup, I was like, let's put the filter on top of it. So double filter. How horrifying is that? Horrifying. Stop, literally stop. Ugh. I gotta go, I gotta, gotta, gotta.